Whoever's controlling your attention is controlling your orders being delivered. What's up, it's Gareth and welcome to today's lesson. We've been banging on the last couple of weeks as you've gone through this lifestyle design journey with us about the importance of being able to catch your mind in thinking the thoughts that you're thinking about because those become the stories that become the belief that deliver the orders that you want or the unwanted orders into your life. So the more you're able to take control of the stories that you're telling yourself, the more you are able to be conscious of what you're thinking about and when you change what you're thinking about and you're conscious about what you're thinking about, you're able to consciously pay for the orders that you want to show up in your world. Today I want to unpack the idea of the device that you may very well be watching this video on and that's your mobile phone. For many of us we go about installing apps and accepting all the defaults without necessarily being very conscious of how the technology, this very powerful technology that we have, is continually pinging us in various moments throughout the day and it is then in control of our attention. And so what I'd like to spend a little bit of time today doing is first of all just explaining the importance of that and second of all giving you some practical ways that you can actually set up your phone so that your phone works for you and you're not the one basically being a slave to your phone every time it bings at times that may not necessarily be conducive to you. So without going into too much detail about this, the attention economy is a real thing. It is this idea that the more time you spend looking at your phone on social media, on various platforms, the more the owners of those platforms have the ability to be able to monetize your attention to sell it to advertisers. That's the reason that Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram are all so addictive and you've got some of the smartest people in the world using some of the most powerful technology that we have which sits in our pockets really trying to get you on your phone as much as you possibly can. Now your phone is really powerful and it has an amazing ability for you to be able to do incredible things in your life but what's important is that you're making sure that you are the person that's controlling how your phone is set up and the notifications that you're receiving and the times that you're receiving those no notifications at. So we are going to go into an Apple install and an Android install that will be relevant to you if you're on an Android device or if you're on an Apple device you'll scroll to the relevant section and go through that process relevant to your particular device but I want to just quickly drop in on something that's really really important with regards to your daily pregame when you wake up in the morning you've been in a sleep state where your mind is completely calm completely quiet completely still that is the reason that we have you doing your pregame first thing in the morning that you are installing your affirmations, that you are reading your perfect day, that you're placing your orders, that you're spending your time being grateful first thing in the morning because you start to lay your strong positive stories on a perfectly flat and clear mountain slope. Remember that analogy of the slope that you, that you go down? In the morning there's no stories, no busyness. So what happens the moment you turn on your phone though and you start to get an email from your boss and a ping from Facebook and you read some terrible news about what's happening wherever you decide to get your news from, you automatically start to build the momentum in a specific way which could be positive but very often it's not positive and what's more important it's not controlled by you. So what's really important is that you find the way to be able to keep your notifications turned off until you've done your daily pregame. This is something that for me and for Matt and some of the strongest um, lifestyle designers that we know this part is not negotiable. They don't wake up in the morning and check their email. They don't wake up in the morning and go to Facebook. They don't wake up in the morning and read the news because those are the things that install the very things that start your day and it's really hard to live perfect days when your day isn't started and controlled by you. So if you are an Android user click to the time that's shown on the bottom of this video right here. The first part of the, of the video is if you've got an Apple device where we're going to show you exactly how you can set up screen time on your Apple phone to be able to control how your notifications are delivered to you and how your phone puts onto do not disturb mode until after your morning routine kicks off. And for today, just go through that. There's not going to be any additional homework. We would suggest that you follow on your phone to be able to set this up in a way that is relevant for you, depending on what time you go to sleep in the evening and what time you um, wake up in the morning. But make sure that you have quiet time away from your screens of your iPhone and your iPad in the evening so that you can do your daily post game and your daily pre game without the interruptions coming from social media and email and all the other notifications that are coming through from your phone. Once you've upgraded, your iOS to iOS 12, 
you will now have something that says screen time in your settings. When you click on that, it gives you a breakdown of exactly how much time you've spent on your phone per day. And I think it also goes and shows you what you've done in the last seven days because it's only been um, two days since the upgrade. I've only got two days worth of information here, but it gives you a breakdown of exactly how much time you spent on social networks, etc. You then have the opportunity to set app limits. You can choose, I've also put a passcode on and I'll show you why later that's important. You can decide to put a limit on the amount of time that you want to spend on a specific category of things. So let's say for example, social networking, you only want to spend a certain amount of time. You can edit what's in social networking, but you can set a specific amount of time that you want per day. Once you've accumulated that time, the phone sends you a notification and says you've reached your screen time for education or for news or for social media for the day. And that's a really nice way to be able to control the time you spend on your device. The next thing is a thing called downtime. And downtime basically closes off all of your apps on your phone except for ones that are called always allowed. So let me explain how I'm using this. I've set my downtime to be from 8.30 in the evening until this is setting correctly, but I wanted to have it set until around seven in the, the following morning. So what that means is that 8.30 at night, my phone, I no longer get messages from Facebook, Instagram, anything except for apps that I've allowed. So nothing comes through on my phone in this time. So I've set it up this way and I'm gonna show you now what it looks like. For the purposes of this, I'm just gonna change the um, my downtimes so that I can show you exactly what happens when you're in a, a situation which is called downtime, which is your time that you don't want to be on your device. And let's say, for example, it starts, the time now is uh, 5 p.m. So let's say, for example, it started at 4 and it ended the following morning at 7. Okay, so technically with those settings now, my phone will be in downtime. That means none of my apps are operational. I've set up something called Always Allowed and I've added some apps that I want to be able to use in this time. So for example, some evenings I meditate or I read, so I use Kindle and I use uh, my meditation app and my journaling app and my task manager because I set up my tasks in the evening and that's not something that I find distracts me. So everything else on my phone will be switched off except for these ones which are called always allowed. Now, because I've set up my downtime to be now, it's normally set up for 8 p.m. until seven in the morning, but I've just changed it to show you. I'll show you what your home screen now looks like because it's, potentially downtime. So if you have a look at this, all the apps on my home screen are now suddenly grayed out and you're not able to access any of these apps. If you choose to go onto something, let's say I wanted to go onto Blinkist to read something, it says you've reached your time limit and it's letting you know what you've done. If you say ignore limit, remind me in 15 limits, minutes or ignore the limit for today. So you can say, cool, I want to go and read and it will remind you again in 15 minutes time because it knows that you're in a downtime situation. So all of the device the applications that are on here are now not available. They're not going to ping. You're not going to get Facebook notifications. But if you still need it to, like I have it set up here, you can go into your task manager and you can see stuff that you need to in your tasks. Hey, y'all, it's Matt. And this is just a quick video to show you how to set up the Android version of what Gareth was talking about in the managing attention lesson. So jumping right in, we're actually going to be using an app called Action Dash. And uh, you can grab this app. There's a free version on the Play Store, but it doesn't. the free version doesn't have the functionality that we need. So if you go to the Settings button, you'll be able to upgrade it. This version that I'm going off of right now is an already updated, up, upgraded account, and I believe the upgrade's like $7. It's definitely worth it for all the powerful features that it puts in there. So in order to get your uh, settings correct so that you can be less distracted when you wake up in the morning, what you're going to do first is on this main screen, you're going to scroll down to this ways to disconnect function. You're going to start with focus mode. So you're going to open that up and you're going to select, you're going to see all the apps on your phone. Go and select the ones that you are often being interrupted with. Like for me, I'll get drive messages, Google assistant to tell me I don't want to get notifications about music or TV. Instagram for sure is off, Facebook, Facebook local. You just go through and select all the apps that you do not want to disturb you at night. Uh, once those are selected, go back, hit the back button, and now you're going to go to schedule time to focus. And you're gonna see a couple different settings that are here. One of them is called time for bed. So if you select that one, we're gonna use this schedule 
and choose the days. For me, I like to wake up and go to sleep the same time, whether it's weekend or not, so I have all of them selected. And what you want to do is the start time is the time that your phone will essentially block all of the apps that you just selected. So for me, uh, 7 o'clock at night is when I no longer want to be bothered with anything related to my device. So that's when, uh, again for me, around 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning. And I like my mornings to be mine. So I'm going to leave everything off until 9, giving me at least a couple of hours of time for me to set my day instead of um, being taken over by what's on the phone. So once you do that one, and now you've got a focus schedule. That's it. Mm-hmm.